I want to bring in my panel now. Um, Paul Rykoff, I want to start with you as someone who represents so many uh, veterans. And first off, if we can just acknowledge just, I mean, how emotional it is to listen to Whitney there. Um, but when you listen to the White House briefing there and the explanation, what did you think? I think the only thing that matters is what Whitney says and what Whitney thinks. And the only thing that matters in the midst of all the political back and forth is not what the president feels or what a congresswoman feels, it's what Mrs. Johnson feels. And I think this is really like a, a conscience calling moment for our nation to think about what's really important. These Gold Star families have, have sacrificed more than we can ever imagine. And they, they hold our country together. They are what represents our country. And if we need a true north in, in times like this, I hope that, that the Gold Star families can, can be that true north. And cut through all the nonsense and let's listen to them and ask them what they need. That's the most important thing I think for us to all focus on right now is what they need and what they think we should do. Ed, what did you think listening there to Whitney? Well, uh, first of all, Brianna, I want to say thank you to you because you asked more questions of her than most of these things do and you let her shine about her husband. I thought it was extraordinary kindness. And I mean, if, as Paul said earlier, these are sacred moments. God spare us the loss of a loved one like that. What a, what a woman that is, I mean, to see. So, look, I think the press conference, I, I admire Sarah uh, Huckabee Sanders, how she handles it. I think General Kelly is now in the middle of the political spat and maybe that will Will pull us back towards what Paul referred to. But if I can say, if, since we're talking about that press conference, it's an extraordinary time in this administration. In one press conference, you heard that NAFTA, health care, tax cuts, ISIS are all happening. And if we could get the space for the sacredness of this event and move it off and focus on the policy, I think people would feel better about what's happening. But it was an extraordinary interview you just had. I can't, I can't say that enough to you, Brianna. Well, th I mean, thank you. And listening to her perspective, it really is yeah. as it is the perspective that matters, as Paul said. Um, Nia, I wonder what you think, though. And Sarah was asked about this. Wasn't it the president who brought General Kelly and the death of his son into the political sphere on this. She said he was just answering a question factually as she dodged that question. But isn't it the role of the president to not do that, to be the person who sets the tone here uh, on the conversation like this? Yeah, and, and I think, you know, it's a good argument to be made that he politicized uh, this uh, from the Rose Garden when he brought uh, Obama in and other presidents and essentially tried to play a sort of one-upsmanship uh, with how other presidents uh, dealt uh, with the families of the war dead. And then he, of course, brought in uh, Robert Kelly, uh, John Kelly's son. And if you go back to when uh, Robert Kelly uh, died, uh, John Kelly was very plain about uh, he didn't want uh, the news media to focus on this. He, he didn't think... Uh, that it, it had to be noteworthy that his son uh, died any more than, it, the, the, than the son of a plumber or the son, you know, uh, of, a, of a mechanic. So he very much uh, didn't want his, his son's death uh, to, to be, you know, specifically highlighted because of who his father was. And so then you had uh, Donald Trump bringing his son uh, into this debate. I think politicizing it is an accurate way to describe the way the president was trying uh, to use uh, John Kelly's son's uh, name in that argument that he was having. Having, uh, about how presidents uh, conducted themselves or, around uh, or, or in relation to the family of the war dead. Uh, and you saw there uh, Sanders uh, not really answer that question, right? Just say he was he was asking, uh, you know, answering a question. I think what's interesting, too, about this is it seems like uh, what, what happened here was that the president's heart was in the right place, uh, but his words didn't necessarily match that. Uh, and it seems like there's been a big uh, miscommunication in the family there. Maisha Johnson uh, and, and the family of, of La David Johnson uh, seem to feel like that their family uh, and that the, the, the memory of the son and, and, the, and the husband uh, were disrespected. So that is something that still uh, has to be addressed at some point. Ed, you were shaking your head at, at a point well, there. Well, yeah, I mean, I just think um, uh, I, I think that was the best thing at the end was his heart was in the right place, and maybe some of it came out wrong. But Kelly, but, but Ed, know, who I'm cares at, where wait. his heart is? That's not the point. Well, no, isn't the that's point what, that's, about? That's isn't the more important thing about no. how a widow and a family perceives what he says? No, I mean, well, it, no. Well, why well, are you making having... excuses for the president? When it's his excuses. job, it's his no, job to not just have his heart in the right place, but his words in the right place. 
No, the job of the president in these incredibly difficult times is to have as best he can to handle the moment correctly. So when he says Obama didn't call Kelly, I don't think we should judge that. When we knew Bill Clinton, Bill Clinton was described as being really good at visiting with families. When the president has Pence meet these bodies and try to handle the sacred moment, they're doing the best they can in these special moments. And there's two things that are true. One is the widow, as we said earlier about Mrs. Hunter, their perspective, no matter what, has to be understood and respected. So I'm with you on all that. But there has to be, we have to pull back. And what I meant when I said Ke Kelly's in the middle of it, he was on the phone call. In other words, they thought that the protocol for being respectful was best to have General Kelly as chief of staff on the call. And he said that it was honorable and it was done in the right way. That's got to mean something. And I'm saying now let's move this off center stage and talk about NAFTA going down and talk about health care going down. I just think we're beating the, the argument well, into uh, the Evan, I'm not. I mean, I'm not ready to talk about NAFTA yet. Evan, weigh in on this. <laughs> Yeah, basically, look, I think this is something that the president could be given the benefit of the doubt on. In fact, I think if this situation had happened with the president, with any other president saying the words that Donald Trump is reported to have said, it probably wouldn't be as much of an issue. I think most other presidents, at least that we've had in modern times, would sort of be given the benefit of the doubt or the pass at maybe saying the wrong thing. Uh, but this is the situation. The situation is that the president is somebody who is known to have not always shown respect for Gold Star families. He's known to have attacked one of our greatest national heroes, uh, John McCain, because he was taken prisoner. He's known to be a person who doesn't exhibit much sympathy in general. And, and because of that, he doesn't have that, that store of credit that you would draw upon in this situation like we all do in our daily lives when we say the wrong thing. If we're generally known to be sympathetic or a well-intentioned person, then we're given the benefit of the doubt. The problem is, is that the president is very low on that credit, especially when it comes to Gold Star families. And so if he says the wrong thing, even mistakenly, it, it can be problematic for him, and I think that's what we're seeing here. I want to thank you all. This is uh, it's very difficult to talk about, and uh, I really appreciate all of your uh, diversity.